and then where he would start showing the start of the end or what he calls the birthing pains. So we will talk about that more another day. Uh, that's not immediately obvious on the electronic Bibles, though. So that was me looking at my paper Bible going, oh, wait a minute. There's, there's something that's not immediately obvious. And the italicized words were very helpful in understanding and breaking the preliminary apart from the start of the end and him saying nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, talking about some different things. And then he says, and, and this is the beginning of the birthing pains or sorrows. I started to divide those things. It, it gave me the ability to see where we are now and how we are not in the tribulation, but it's not far off. And then, you know, I'm still kind of studying this Matthew, no, Luke 21, 24, where it says, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive into all nations. And it has these marks here and it says, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And I'm still studying it, but I'm really wondering if the times of the Gentiles, if he's giving a rundown of history and he's touching on 70 AD and he's touching on some early martyrdom and things like that. And then he is bringing you all the way down to the point of the end of the age of grace that he is calling you know, the times of the Gentiles or, the, you know, the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled, which is kind of an interesting marker for me because then he goes in this completely interesting direction that starts in verse 25 and says, there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations. Are we having some distress of nations right now with perplexity? Oh, I think so. And water can be a couple things in the Bible. It can be the money. It can be the debt. Like it talks about in Tom Hanks's Once in a Lifetime video, the salt, the water. There's a spiritual aspect to water that I don't have time to get into right now. And water is also associated with the people as well. The horse sitting on many waters, the people sitting on many waters just for examples. So, you know, when he's talking about C, I don't think that he's necessarily just talking about physical, although that's part of it. But, you know, again, there's this thing of non-human creation and human creation. And so as he's talking about distress upon the nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring, I think he's talking about two things is what I'm trying to say here. I think he's talking about the people that are upset. And he's talking about the waters of the earth that are upset. Dual things. And I think here from verse, you know, the, the return of the son of man, the beginning of the end, judgment day, Yom Hadin, Revelation 10, um, the Lord coming back to claim his sons of God, glorify us with new flesh, and the procuring of his bride, you know, the five wise virgins that when he called, they immediately came. Remember, that's Matthew 25. Something's happening here. Not only is the earth, the people freaking out, because of this snare that we're going to talk about here in a minute. But also the physical, the physical non-human part of creation seems to be getting upset. And when you go poking through the Psalms, which we're not going to do today, although I'll try to put a link in uh, below to go find the Psalm for you. There are Psalms that start indicating that when the king comes to the earth, the sea and the waves begin roaring. Why? Well, creation, both non-human creation and human creation, kind of get it. <gasps> the king is coming. You don't ever hear about that from the Left Behind series, do you? No, you do not. 
And what happens here, whatever's going on and transpiring is so cataclysmic that look at this, men's hearts start failing them for fear. Why are you afraid? Oh, you didn't get into the ark like we told you to, like the Bible told you to, like Jesus the Christ told you to, like your apostles and prophets told you to repent and become born again. You failed to follow directions. And now the flood of judgment as the days of Noah. So shall it be when the son of man comes. That's happening. People are afraid because they see him incoming. And much more could be said about that. The lightning, the chariot that he rides in on, the witness from Ezekiel. You think God was just giving people visions just for the heck of it? Like, hey, hey, Ezekiel, I want to show you how powerful I am just because. No, you have to start connecting, friends, the visions that the other prophets had to understand why he was giving them and connect them together with the end times that the church through the television will never do for you. That's why I don't listen to them anymore. I, I read the scripture for myself and I let the Holy Spirit who wrote this dictate for me and connect together the precepts. He's the glue that holds it together and makes it make sense. Not saying I have it all figured out, but Getting rid of the prophecy teachers through the television has aided my comprehension like four bajillion percent. The people are upset and having heart attacks because looking after those things which are coming on the earth. What's that? It's him. He's coming. This isn't the end of the tribulation, as Hal Lindsey and his friends would tell you. This is about to be the beginning for the powers of heaven shall be shaken he his spirit is dunamos power dynamite he's power god is raw power did you see when he came down on mount sinai he scorched the top of the mountain he's trying to explain to you i am power and today yom hadin which is not today i'm just saying in this in this where we are in the scripture, is Yom Hadin, and he's mad. Go read Psalm 95, and you'll find out how mad he is. And you will you can read Revelation 10 and find out. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are mad. This is the lion. He's not the lamb anymore now. He was the lamb in the Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, and Pentecost. Now the autumn has cometh and the lion is mad. And look at verse 20, 27. You can go, Teresa, you are so off right now. Okay, well then explain to me, dear ones, in opposition, verse 27. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. You think that's only at the end of the tribulation? Bookends. Bookends. There's two comings, and this is the first one. And guess what? All the people that didn't listen to him, they're like, oh, he was real, and he's mad, and he's really mad, and he's coming. And people literally start clutching their chests and having heart attacks because he comes in on his chariot, and it has the four living beings. Read Ezekiel. Connect Ezekiel with Revelation 10, friends, it goes together. The king is coming here and making himself known. And he gives the order, and time shall be no more. The times of the Gentiles be filled, fulfilled. I'm taking my sons of God and my bride, and we're leaving. Oh, and your booby prize is the judgment. Here's the fake Antichrist. Now he may come forth. Right? That's what that is. And enjoy your slavery. I tried to save you from your sin slavery and you wouldn't listen. I tried to save you from the debt slavery that they're procuring for you right now, but you wouldn't listen. So I'm going to give you what you want. But once you get it, you won't like it. Now look here what he says, friends. Verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, what things? What he's telling you right here, right? We're in this chapter right here. The sun, the sun and the moon and the stars, the signs... 
this is your feast of trumpets. It's that virgin with that moon at her feet. It could be in 100, what I say, 183, 182 days. Um, and you're supposed to watch for that feast every year until he fulfills it, is how that works. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. And he's redundant. Why is he all redundant? Because he wants you to get it. No, literally, look up. Put your face and tilt it up, is what he's saying. And lift up your heads. Your eyes go up when your head goes up, is what he's telling you. And why is he saying this? For your redemption draweth nigh. Your bodily redemption. Your glorification of your flesh. It's your birthday. Yay! It's your birthday. If you got born again, now you're getting your new flesh, which is precisely what you see happening in Revelation. Let's go there. Revelation 12, 5. It's not just about the head of the new creation, though he's a part of this. And what did we say? We've been saying that God is planting a crop of what? New creation in Christ. And in verses 3 and 4, you've got the dragon swirling, coming to try to destroy what? Humanity, the church, freedom, truth, all those things we already mentioned. The war that we talked about. His, we'll do verse four, it's right here. His tail swept a third of the stars from the sky, tossing them to the earth. I, I really have no idea what that means. I mean, is it asteroids? Is it, I don't know. I don't know. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth. We're talking about feast of trumpets. Ready to devour her child as soon as she gave birth. And we've talked about what a stupid plan that is because once you get your glorified flesh, now you have put on immortality. Right? And you would have Paul sitting there smiling at you going, I totally told you that in 1 Corinthians 15. Put on immortality. All throughout the New Testament, he says to do what? Put on Christ. Put on your new creation in Christ covering. Put on your wedding clothes. Put on your imputed righteousness. Put on your connection of rebirth through adoption through the Son of God. Put on Christ. Put on the new humanity. Right? Get born again. And once you get your new flesh, which is what she's about to do here on one of these forthcoming Feast of Trumpets, could be the one on Tuesday. It'll be 180 days out. That's six months. Watch for it. There's only so much time that is necessary for the planning, deployment, and, and um, preliminary setup. There's a point where they want to do this thing, right? Is six months enough time to do that globally? I don't know. I'm not in the military. I don't know. I just know my Bible. And if there was ever a time to be paying attention, it would be now. So anyhow, Satan has a completely stupid plan to try to eat, destroy, kill, murder the new creation in Christ. Who, in verse 5, look at this, and she, that is Jerusalem, that is the personification of the covenant of our mother, the personification of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and Pentecost, this, this entity that is really the covenant that gives birth to the new creation in Christ that Paul talks about in Galatians 3 and 4. Just read Galatians 3 and 4. It'll all make sense in Isaiah 54, 1. Go read that. Sarah had an heir named Isaac Laughter. And in typology, the greater progression of that is that Jerusalem or the new covenant that your Lord procured in Jerusalem for you as a gift that most people are refusing to get into. She gives birth to the new creation in Christ. And you have Christ as the head and the body as the church. That's all over the New Testament. Read Romans 12. Read Ephesians 5.21. It's all over the scripture. You, you can't get through a book without tripping over it practically, friends. He's creating a new eternal mankind in Christ. And she gave birth to a what? A son, a male child, the new creation in Christ. Who will? That was not helpful. Go back. Who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter? Okay, well, Christ, yes, and all of his royal family. Read your letters in Revelation. He promised that to overcomers in his blood, the one new mankind. 
It's not just Jesus. Jesus is kind, though. He's a co-heir. Just read your Bible. It's all in there, friends. The church won't teach you, but it's all in there. And the Holy Spirit will. He's good. And what? Her child was what? Caught up. Caught up to God in his throne. Your bodily redemption. Didn't we just read about that? Look, Lift up your head. Look up. Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. It's the day of judgment. You're seeing funkadocious things happening on the earth. People are clutching their heart, having heart attacks. He's incoming. The lightning is incoming. Your Lord that told you, I'll be back, totally comes back. And the people go, oh, I didn't believe. That's the problem. So what does caught up mean? Look at this. This is not, this is not Jesus right here when he floated up passively with a different Greek word in Acts 2, this is a violent snatching away. This is a ob obtaining by robbery, a seize, a seizure, a snatch. This is your kids walking out into the road and a semi is a breath away from hitting them. And you grab your kid's hair and violently rip it out of the road to keep them from being murdered. That's what your Lord is coming to do because he sees the snare that's coming. Do you understand? The satanic, global, government, communist, blah, 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 everything that I've already explained. And I'm not mad. I'm just kind of intense. But I try to be all like jovial and happy too. This is a whole nother like hour study on its own. I'm, I've talked about before. I'm not doing that right now. This video started to get long anyhow. Uh, let's wrap it up. So be watchful. And this is as much a message for you right now in Jesus name. Please hear me. As I could possibly convey to you. This is for all the people right now that have been an hour's worth of bread lines. This is for the 22 million in my country and the millions plus around the world and whoever may have access to this video. This is a word to you right now from God, the Holy Spirit that wrote this. This is what he would tell you. Listen, please. Verse 34, be watchful. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the, the cares of this life. The cares of this life, friends. And so that day, and this actually, this is wrong in the King James. This should be capped right here. That's wrong. This day, I wish I could just write right over that, a big capital D right there. That's your day of judgment right there. That's your day of Yom Hadin coming, and they're setting up for it now. They're setting you up for it now. They're setting you up to exterminate you like a bunch of flies because they hate you. And I love you, and I want you to be prepared. I want you to be born again. I want your friends and family to be born again. I want everybody to get on the ark because the flood of judgment on judgment day is coming. Do you understand? And so that the day come upon you unawares. You didn't get born again. You don't know where you are in space and time. You have no idea that there's a satanic global government setup coming to destroy you and murder you. You're unawares. You don't know that Christ is coming. You don't know that you're about ready to eat it. And if you die in your sins, he accepts your rejection and you go burn in hell for the sins that you are going to take responsibility for. Well, Jesus sat there on the cross suffering in the hot Judean sun and said, I wanted you to put your sins on me, but you wouldn't. Caught unawares. And, and this is your, 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 Getting a lifeline thrown out to you before you're not going to have easy choices and options available to you, dear ones. Four, as a snare. Oh, a snare? You mean like a trap? Mm-hmm. Shall it come upon all that dwell on the face of the whole earth? So humanity is composing this snare trap. Satan is going to double cross them and he's composing a double cross. And then Jesus Christ, the most intelligent of all, he has a snare as well. There's a lot going on in this. And a rescue is available. And what's he saying? Verse 36, watch 
Therefore, watch, be born again, and know your feasts. Watch, pay attention, and pray always. Pray that you get born again, that ye may be counted worthy as an overcomer, born again in Jesus. Just all the scriptures should float together to escape. To do what? To escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. To do what? To stand before the Son of Man. Because the Son of Man is coming in Revelation 10. The King is coming. And he's going to be wrestling with Jacob soon. Go read that in Genesis. Typology. Worthy to escape. Let's go to the word escape. I did not intend this to be such a long video, but talked about a lot of stuff. We still need to get back to our economist guy too, huh? Oh, that was not helpful. Um, take me back to verse one, which I did not want. Hold on. I want to show you escape. Was it 36? I think. To escape. 1628. To flee out, away, escape. Escape something. Ek. Ek means out of. To flee out. To get out. To leave. To exit. Get on the ark. Exit out of here. The whole point of Jewish weddings, if you've ever watched a Jewish wedding, they stand in a in a beautiful hoopah. That should help you to understand the four corners of that hoopah. Well, in this case, three, so you can see what's going on. That is supposed to help you understand heaven, the bridegroom, the Jewish wedding, the nesu, the leaving with Christ, the, the, the virgins, the five wise virgins. You're leaving here, going to get glorified flesh, going to get your eternal life. You're having your birthday, your Yom Harat Ho Alam to humanity, to create new creation in Christ, to the redo with the last Adam. And you're going to go to heaven, Hoopa, heaven, and go get married to God while the earth gets the other guy. That's what's going on. So, yeah, Paul explains to us, you're the heir now. Isaac was the heir to Sarah, who was barren and old. And now, after 5,993 years, which we must be coming up on soon, out of 6,000, you have Jerusalem, who is barren in that she's never had kids before, right? She's not had the new creation in Christ before. And now she's old, and she is giving birth to... To, I think I just got out of it. No, I didn't. To an heir now. And while you and I aren't babies, you have to understand the way the Bible presents things. Sarah had a baby, Isaac, laughter, who was an heir, who was a supernatural birth. You and I are a supernatural birth at justification. Then you get sanctified, and then you're waiting for your redemption, your glorification, your new flesh. And it's being presented in the picture of a baby being born. It's the, new, it's the collective new humanity. Christ is the head. You're the body. You're the new eternal humanity for a new earth and a new heaven later on down the road. This is what Paul explains to you in Galatians 3 and 4. And here's the global government that seeks to eat you. And in another book... It's this global government nightmare. It's kind of dark in here today. Right? So Daniel goes into the whole, I guess I'm over here. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and then this fourth terrible beast kingdom. This is your transhumanist uh, surveillance, communist, psychopath, everything we already talked about, government. And look, it's coming out of the water of the debt that they're purposely putting the planet under the debt to kill you, the creditor. Oh, and there's my kitty. My sweet little angelic kitty cat. His name is Harvey or Harvito. 
Okay, economy in shambles and companies advertising economy opening. J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America. And he does a little description here. Nothing is as it seems. Oh, do you know why? Because we just spent an hour and a half telling you why. <laughs> I don't think this guy's a Christian, but if he read the Bible, he'd understand what was going on. We begin with some of the companies advertising the reopening of the economy. Oh, goody. Apple, Bank of America, Google, Goldman Sachs, Honeywell, J.P. Morgan, Chase, Lockheed Martin. Oh, they're the military uh, contractors uh, who give the weaponry, sells the weaponry, like Tony Stark from the stupid movies, to our glorious government. Gee, I wonder what they'll do with those weapons. And McDonald's. Big banks have been running the entire relief effort from the Black Rock managing the Fed's purchases to Cudlow on every commi uh, committee. There is an attempt to convince everyone the economy will be able to restart as it was. Not that that would be, not that that would be a good thing as the economy never recovered. Did I read that right? Hold on. The economy would be able to restart as it was. Okay, let's say that again. There is also another attempt to convince everyone the economy will be able to restart as it was. Not that that would be a good thing as the economy never recovered. I think he's missing a comma in there somewhere. The crazy part is that there was an admission that the stock market was in a bubble until all of a sudden the entire narrative changed. Oh, pay attention to what he's saying with that. They began repeating the script. The, the greatest economy ever on a constant basis to convince everyone that the U.S. economy was a tremendous success. Are you serious? This is how Satan works. He just lies about everything. They're stealing you blind and then lying about the whole thing. Recently, the script has been running... Uh, seems much more sinister as it will have some terrible consequences. Many people have come to believe that there is nothing wrong with the time being, but as Scott Minard even once said, the people begin to awaken from their stupor. I think there should be a period there. He thinks the S&P 500 will plunge to 1,200. Plunge is never a good word with finance. That's our biggest problem at the point of, un of a false understanding of reality that has been scientifically created and repeated until the people have fallen under its spell. And there's so many other videos I could share with you and burn up a lot of time by doing that. But you can kind of just see for yourself. I mean, things are going so well. The worst is yet to come global economic collapse and the mountain of debt millions can't pay their bills that was by de design trillions he says 40 trillion 40 t -t 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 trillion dollars have vanished and no one is talking about it he's talking about with regard to productivity being ripped off but that all gets translated into hard assets at the end of the day with all the, the financial um, magic and mirrors, smoke and mirrors playing around, uh, fabricating things and, and giving us a mountain of paper that they will deem is worth nothing while they steal all the gold and silver and go hide and then just watch you die in the flood of judgment that's coming. You understand? The worst economic collapse in history is starting now. Be prepared. Oh, yeah. Be prepared. Totally be prepared. How do you get prepared? Hide in the ark. That's what I told you. The Bible told you. More importantly, banks brace for huge loan losses, falling prices ahead. Um, and he says here, no hyperinflation yet. Yet. Economic decline. I, I tend to listen to my financial guys more than I listen to others. New World Order is here. <clears throat> Sudden food shortage alarm. And they're shutting down food supply. The 
celebrities are being irritating, but that's a whole other topic for another day. 22 million jobs lost in America. Philly manufacturing, worst collapse in history. Lobbying sores, major DC payday. We all want handouts, but the American people just get this tiny little pittance when the government gives out free money because that's totally normal. It's totally normal. They're robbing you without a gun and then they're going to murder your body and, and leave your carcass as if you were in New York and you got mugged, only it's the whole planet all at once as a slow takeover. And then, like I said, I think that America is the sacrificial lamb and maybe just the whole West in general. That's what's going on. That's the snare that Christ warned you of. BlackRock is buying into Fed purchases they are making. Munchen, who Trump loves, praises airline bailouts. So the government is taking control of all industries and they just have the money presses printing, filling the planet with that worthless paper and they're stealing all the wealth we have been explaining. The job cuts will be permanent. Expect massive defaults at a historical scale. Do you, you think the end is coming? Does any of this seem normal to you? Let's play a few minutes of this. And I think we need to go over some of these things. They're very important about who's involved in this plan. And if you'll notice, some really shady individuals have been involved in this the entire time. There's a couple of major things that happen and no one even seems to notice. I'm talking about BlackRock, this secret you know, bank taking over this entire relief package, the small business program completely out of loans. From what I hear and what I've seen going on is there are actually a ton of actual small businesses who, when they went to apply for these loans, it took several days for them to even show that they were reviewing their application. And by the time the banks started to look at their application, they were told there's no money left for oh. you. So the largest companies, they got this money very quickly. It was doled out to some of the most powerful companies, even the Small Business Paycheck Protection Program. So it doesn't really seem to be for small businesses, and it's even crazier than that. Who is on this task force? Larry Kudlow, Stephen Muchin. No surprise, they're also on the task force for opening everything back up. There's some other shady individuals involved in this process as well. Now, somebody was on our Twitter yesterday, and it's interesting because, you know, I, I, I'm on there all day trying to give updates about interesting stories. Not all of them make it into the program, but somebody was shocked by what they're hearing, as some of you sometimes are, I'm sure. And they were shocked by some of the things I was saying, and they said, that's a very interesting perspective. Do you have any hard facts to back that up? And so I showed them a link for the channel to come over because we try to cover as much as we can. And there are a ton of people out there right now who think that we're about to see a sharp V-shaped recovery. Yeah, ah. And a lot of these people even think that the entire thing is fake. Well, maybe not fake, but not too bad. That's because the information that has been designed and put out into the airwaves is meant to make you believe that. I mean, the man wheeled out a TV in the middle of a press conference to play Fox News clips. The reason he would choose those clips, if you'll notice, it's a script. They are playing over and over yeah. and over again. Yeah. And the reason they're doing this is it's essentially brainwashing. Yeah. They had a goal in mind. They played a compilation of clips that included several of the most popular talking points, you know, about shutting down the flights early. I don't want to go back over it again. It makes my stomach turn hearing it because I know that it is a script. And when they are reciting a script multiple times in a mockingbird fashion, yeah. it's because they are programming us. And it wouldn't you know, be so significant if it wasn't such a serious issue. So let's talk about some of the people involved here. Because immediately when this began, and you got to look at it through the viewpoint of how they see this problem, how they're handling this problem. So immediately in the beginning, the stock market began to crash as soon as we realized this moved into Italy. That's when the stock market in the U.S. began its crash. Of course, it was getting a little shaky once it moved over into South Korea. But once it entered the Western world, that's when everybody realized it's not going to be stopped. It's not going to stop. <coughs> Leading up to that point, we were told pretty much that whole week that it was 
self-contained. It wasn't a problem, and their manufacturer shutting down is a tremendous opportunity for American manufacturers. And then we were told that it's a great time to buy stocks. Now, of course, many billionaires in our world had their entire fortunes invested in the stock market. So I think the initial flurry of information or misinformation, it was designed to prop up the stock market or to stop it from crashing. Even Kudlow came out, it's a great time to buy stocks. This man said the same line every four or five days, all the way as the Dow Jones gave up 30%. They came up with a number of different lines that were designed to stop the stock market from crashing throughout that time. Like, it's a flu. It's a hoax. And people can say, oh, well, he didn't say that. I heard it with my own ears. I saw it. They even said that there was a cure very early on, and you know what? There became an entire flurry of activity carrying all of these narratives different directions. A ton of people who thought it was some grand scam trying to keep the world from this life-saving item. They told us not to wear masks. They told us there was no risk to the American people. They told us that thanks to the fast actions of Donald Trump, there's nothing to be concerned about at all, and the impact to the U.S. economy was going to be very minimal. Very minimal. What? All of these, they were lies. You see, now, the impact of the U.S. economy is immense. They were lies attempting to stop the stock market from crashing. Oh. Instead of acknowledging that the stock market was crashing because of a genuine problem, they pointed the finger in different directions, saying that it's simply the way they are speaking about the problem that is causing this to happen. It what? is the news, them making up this story. This was something that began in a foreign land. It's a very serious subject. We saw a country like China have 700 million people who were not able to move under some sort of restriction. Now, all this was said not because it was true, it was said so that people would stop selling their stocks. Throughout that entire time, they had Warren Buffett out almost daily to explain why it's such a great opportunity to get some solid American companies for cheap. All these people, they were performing a service. And so they continued to push out this information on a daily basis. And thus, they have convinced people that it's not real. Larry Kudlow is the man who got on TV and said that the impact on the U.S. economy was going to be very minimal. That this was a tremendous opportunity for American manufacturers. This is a man what? who is willing to do and to say anything it takes. He is willing to look straight into the camera with a straight face and tell bold face lies. Because keep in mind, after the meeting they had... There was all that insider trading going on by members of Congress. They went and began to sell their shares. Why did they sell their shares? Because it was clear they were well informed about what was going to be happening. The banks were involved as well. They're the ones who came out and told everybody that we are going to have a very sharp rebound because they think they're going to turn the economy back on like a light switch. Probably one of the biggest differences in why you may find what you're hearing here like it's from a different world is that I don't watch the cable news. I've not been sitting while they repeat this script to me over and over again that this is like the flu, all of this. I was shocked it took so long for the economy to collapse. It became very apparent to me that these are men that will never tell me the truth. They will never tell me the truth. You know, I put some ideas forward back then saying that these seem like men who are trying to instill calm at any cost. What's interesting about phase one, and a lot of you may not be aware of this, because did you read the plan? I read it. What I see there is that the economy is not going to turn back on like a light switch. Now, first off, let's see some of the advisors in this entire reopening process. It's going to be Apple, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, Honeywell, J.P. Morgan Chase, Lockheed Martin, and McDonald's. Notice there is no medical professionals in that group. They're the banks. The banks are in charge here. And if you read phase one, they don't say that it's not real or it's not serious. What they say is that if you go to work, you have to be what they would consider one of the invulnerables. Now, I'm not even going to touch on the point that's not a real thing, but the plan says the people who they would consider vulnerable must remain in their homes. And if you go to work, you must 
take steps to make sure you have no contact with those vulnerable. They're also taking serious limiting standards about the way businesses operate. So your favorite restaurant. It used to operate a different way before the restaurant you're going to see if and when it opens. But they do acknowledge that if you go out into the public to go back to work, where you're in close contact with other people, you will not see your vulnerable family members because they warn that you'll probably get them sick. So this isn't any different. This is the same plan they offered up a few weeks ago when they said, if I was a grandparent, I would want to just make that sacrifice for my children. Or like Larry Kudlow, the economic cost to individuals is just too great. I fully understand that this nation was living paycheck to paycheck. I know it. I know people are hurting right now, and they don't have any other option, and the bills are coming due. Most of the small businesses in America didn't even get a hint of any kind of relief or help, even though they got together and promised us what they were doing was for the small businesses and for the workers. Yeah. They took trillions of dollars from the Treasury. And now the most powerful banking institutions in America, and it's not just banking institutions, it's pretty much the largest, most sinister businesses we have out there, are now in control of reopening the economy. Now, to be honest, it's not much of a plan. The truth is, it was put out and published as an attempt to, once again, save the stock market. Take the time to tell who they would consider the vulnerable members of your family, to tell them, I love you, because they acknowledge that you're not going to be seeing them. If you have family in a nursing home, there is not going to be any visiting allowed because of this action. Communism. If it would be one of those vulnerable people, you are not returning to work. It's funny because when you look at phase two, it says they can start phasing back in the vulnerable members. They know that's all a sham. How many people out there are going to be isolating the vulnerable in their houses or putting them in a separate place, sending them off on an iceberg just to go and pass on somewhere? They're doing exactly what they said they were going to be doing just a couple weeks ago when people were outraged, except for they just changed the way they worded it. They said, of course, it's one of the hardest decisions of my life. I'll definitely say that. It's one of the hardest decisions. And do you know why he said it in that manner? Not because it's true, but because there was outrage whenever they said it the opposite way, where they said, you know, the elderly should just make that sacrifice. Nothing that has been said oh. is true. Nothing has changed. And honestly, this is going to ensure that America will never be the same again. We've talked about it several times. Social Security is bankrupt in this country. The baby boomer generation is retiring at a very rapid rate, and they just simply cannot afford for the promises they've already made. Most of the pensions are bankrupt. Most of the state pensions, the public pensions. They also think that there's too many people in the world. Also, all those people, they're doing a lot of problems with the weather. The point yeah. of all this was to try to reach through to some of you because there are some people who are out there thinking this is about to snap right back and they're looking at all of the opportunities in the stock market mm -hmm. and they think that we're going to just flip this on like a light switch mm -hmm. because the thing is already gone. And they don't say that it's gone. In fact, they know that it is not. The baby boomer generation holds an enormous amount of wealth at this point. We're on the verge of the greatest wealth reconfiguration we have ever seen. Get that. The workforce participation rate among those that are older than 65 has been very, very strong since the Great Recession. That's largely because people are not able to retire after that stock market crash. We also have the problem that the younger generations, they're not really working as much. So yeah. what is it going to do to the tax dollars if because of this move, those people will no longer be allowed to re-enter their workplace. And what's going to happen to the stock market once people begin to realize the economy was opening, not because it was defeated or that we had won the victory, but because they had acknowledged there were some sacrifices that needed to be made. It's going to be a long time till things actually get back to what they would consider normal. Corporate profits, they were flat from the year before in 2019. They've actually are lower than they 
were back in 2014. So corporate profits have been declining. Yet the same people who are putting out the information now convincing you that these sacrifices should be made for the betterment of the country as a whole or the economy, they're the same ones who continuously repeated like a script that this is the greatest economy ever. That too was a lie. They talk continuously about the record high stock market prices and the all-time low unemployment rate. Just like a script. Over and over. And there's a ton of people out there who actually believed this, though their lives didn't change that much. To make matters worse, most small businesses don't have the means to be able to comply with some of the restrictions that are set forward in the Phase 1. In truth, it was really no plan at all. Now the reason, like a script, they kept telling you is the greatest economy ever, I mean I saw Larry Kudlow come out and say that <laughs> as well, was because they had no intentions on fixing the economy. Apparently, they just wanted to tell us it's already fixed. Now previous to all of this, they pointed out the stock market was in a bubble. And then very quickly changed that entire conversation into saying it is because we are in the greatest economy ever. They did make major changes, but it takes some time for those changes to really begin to work in an economy. Truth be told, the biggest thing that changed was just the narrative. They just continuously repeated over and over again that this is the greatest economy ever until enough people began to believe it. Participation in the stock market by the retail crowd compared to net worth was the highest in history right before this crash. Do you know what that means? That means that the people, the actual people, were beginning to believe that the stock market would go up forever. And right as soon as they put all of their money in, it was gone. I'm tempted to believe by the fact that now the largest banks in America have been given total control about the economy, about the money printing, about how this economy is going to reopen. They were also given total control about how this relief was going to happen that perhaps they were all just continuously repeating that narrative, the greatest economy ever, to convince us to put our money into the stock market for the big take. These banks yeah. have had a tremendous payday. The lobbyists have had a big payday. Perchance, all the different lines and narratives that were coming out of these banks were a part of that goal, to get those retail consumers to come back into the markets in a stock market crash. Not everybody loses. And very, very few actually benefited from the stimulus. Not only is the cable news a danger, but they're using the psychological mind warping now against us. If you would only turn off the cable news and look into the economic statistics, you will see what I see. There's lies all around us, running constantly, both sides. Half the time, it's hard to figure out what's going on at all. In a normal economy, the collapse that we have seen in China was already reported by Goldman Sachs if global GDP even declines by 3%, and that's just not falling to negative 3%, but if it declines by 3%, which would have put this year's GDP growth at positive 4%, that's for the world, Goldman Sachs said it would collapse the U.S. economy. Global GDP is set to come in at negative 9.8%. Anyone who's telling you that this is only going to be a mosquito bite and things are going back to normal, they're lying. Yeah. Just like they always do. And of course, they're attempting to jawbone the markets. We're not entering the greatest depression in U.S. history. It's already here. These are some of the worst economic numbers we have ever seen. Scott Menard from Guggenheim, he was just warning that as soon as the investing public wakes up to reality, he anticipates we will see S&P 500 at 1,200 points. That would represent a crash of around 50% from here. Wow. Any stock market gains we've seen have only been in five companies. And that's because investor sentiment is not suggesting we are entering a new bull market. Those five companies, they are all tech companies. They're online companies. People are putting their money there because they know everybody knows. And the fact that they would suggest, and that's not the case, obviously they don't mean you well. Please don't be fooled into thinking that it's going to be smooth sailing from here on out. And these actions will have very grave consequences. And when you're listening to them speak, 
You're not listening to the news. You are being programmed. Yes. And really, the only solution for this nation is that the people get up and pull the plug out of the wall. Too late. We must do it now. Too late. Nobody is trying to free us from the banks right now. You should understand that. The banks have never gained this much power before. They have commandeered our entire economy, and they didn't fight for it. It was given to them. All right, thank you guys for stopping by and joining us. As always, stay safe. Okay, so to bring this very long, bring this very long video to a close, um, this is what you need to know. Mr. Rothschild's energy discovery. This is the screw over, however you want to phrase it. What Mr. Rothschild had discovered was the basic principle of power, influence, and control over people as applied to economics. The principle is when you assume, listen, please, when you assume the appearance of power, people soon give it to you. Mr. Rothschild had discovered that currency or deposit loan accounts had the required appearance of power that could be used to induce people. Inductance with people corresponding to a magnetic field into surrendering, listen to this, surrendering, surrendering their real wealth. Real wealth in exchange for the promise of greater wealth instead of actual real compensation. They would put up real collateral in exchange for a loan of promissory notes. Mr. Rothschild found that he could issue more notes than he had backing for. So as long as he had someone's stock of gold as a persuader to show his customers. Now, they're going to get into a whole bunch more information here. In page 48 of Behold the Pale Horse. But what I want you to really get out of this is that Tom Hanks video shows you. You get the, per the worthless paper dollars. And they get the gold and the silver and they go underneath the earth, the water, down or wherever, into their billion dollar bunkers while they take over the planet and destroy you, turn you into slaves. And they actually, in here somewhere, I'm going to try to find it real quick. This is not the easiest book in the world to read, I will tell you. At the end of the day, after they steal all your money and leave you with the paper dollars then the game is kill the creditor kill the creditor that would be you if i don't find it right away we'll live i'll put a copy in in case you want to go through this and read the science part of it is amazingly boring in my humble opinion But it's basically the, the screwing over of people forging a silent war against them by thievery. The social welfare program is nothing more than an open-ended credit balance system which creates a false capital industry to give non-productive people a roof over their heads and food in their stomachs. This can be useful, however, because the recipients become state property in return for the gift. A standing army for the elite. For he who pays the piper picks the tune. So, here we go. Those who get hooked on the economic drug must go to the elite for the fix. In this, the method of introducing large amounts of stabilizing, I don't know how to pronounce that, cap assistance is by borrowing, listen, borrowing on the future credit of the world.
And we're getting to it here. Here we go. It's the sentence right here. The same thing is achieved by the government, by a government printing money. Now remember, the central banks are all over the planet, dispersed all over, and they each have a printing press. And they're all printing dollars. Printing, 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 printing. That's for you. You get the worthless paper that is worth zero pretty soon here. And they take the wealth out of the dollar and go hide. And they eat steak and lobster while they watch you by a video starve to death if you didn't get into the ark. The same thing is achieved by a government by printing money beyond the limit of the gross national product, an economic process called inflation, or in this case, what you see coming, 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 that Christ warned you about, hyperinflation, too much. Remember that inflation is only the act of printing money in excess of gross national product. They could blame it on the price of whatever because you never really know the real cause. The real cause and the only cause of inflation is the printing of more money beyond the gross national product. And that's why their printing presses are like smoke is coming out of them in terms of how much they have these things running, running, running. It's because they're setting you up for your murders. As much as you see that, you should go up to your fairgrounds or wherever your hospitals and go look at those little tent cities, I'm calling them. There's nobody in those tent cities. Why do you think those tents are there? Because that's going to be where you're led to, especially by your churches that are like, you totally need to listen to your government. Do what your government tells you, okay? And go to these tents and get your little vaccine and you don't know what's in that shot. Are they putting Clorox in your veins? You don't know. I, I would be very concerned about giving my arm and my veins over to somebody and going, I trust you. Totally don't trust them. But this is, this is where the rubber meets the road for those that don't listen and correct well and get born again. Um, this puts a large quantity of money into the hands of the public and maintains a balance against their greed creates a false self-confidence in them and for a while stays the wolf from the door. They must eventually resort to war to balance the account as they're lending out all this money, but it's not even real money. Because war ultimately is merely the act of destroying the creditor. Think about that for a while. And you have just ultimately gotten to the place. Yep, look at that. Look here. Since most of the, the general public will not exercise restraint in taking out credit is what they're saying, which is why Tom Hanks is making fun of you surfing on the money that's water. That's the worthless notes making fun of you and then showing you pictures of the, the, the glove the medical glove thrown away in the garbage can. That's him saying, we're throwing you away. We're breaking up with you. We're breaking up with humanity. We're breaking up with Christianity. You're worth nothing more than an old nasty medical glove. Uh, anyhow, there's two alternatives to reduce the economic inductance of the system. Number one, let the populace bludgeon each other to death in war, which will only result in the total destruction of the living earth. And they love their mother earth. Pretty soon, one day, they're going to give her a technological identity. And Lucifer is going to appear in the form of mother earth, who is going to be some type of technological, you know, like Vicky from iRobot, but probably moving around in a body. Uh, of some making, and uh, it's that rotten angel, but you think it's Mother Earth, the abomination of desolation. Or number two, take, listen to me now, please. Number two, take control of the world by use of economic silent weapons. Silent water, go, go watch uh, once in a lifetime, the original by Talking Heads, the silent water. Water is money. Water is debt. Silent water. 
silent weapons in the form of a quiet warfare. That's why they're big giant liars. And reduce the economic inductance of the world to a safe level by a process. This is the best part. Are you ready for it? Of benevolent slavery and genocide. That is what they are setting you up for, which is exactly why in the Tom Hanks video, watch it. He's telling you, and I thought it was a, a, a minute and 34 seconds, but I flipped numbers. It's actually a minute and 43 seconds. He's telling you exactly what they're doing. You're being set up, planet Earth, for your murders. That's what's going on. See the water? And the Antichrist rises out of the water. You may find yourself living in your garden shack. And you may find yourself not at home in your home. And you may find yourself looking for your large automobile. And you may find yourself without a beautiful house, without a beautiful wife. And you may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? Okay, so. <laughs> I'm telling you, friends, he's telling you perfectly how they are robbing you blind. They're, they're through inflation, through the communism, all the stuff that we've talked about. You're going to be a good little global citizen with all the debt on your heads and like Chinese credit score, a technological takeover. See the people getting all pissy. Hold on a second. I do like that word pissy. See, no more. They're all in strike. They're making fun of you. You understand that? When you do your little protests out at the state capitol, and, and, and you have your little signs and you put them on YouTube. You know why they have social media? It's so that you can go protest and go, I don't like this. I'm on strike. Guess what? They don't care. They're setting up to murder you. And they're anticipating your little strikes. All these channels where their recipe of what should we do, what should we do? Oh, oh, what should we do? What should we do? And then the people say, well, fight back. Richie from Boston, Israeli News Live. I could go on and on and on. Ice Age Farmer. Uh, on and on it goes. Fight back, fight back, fight back. You're bringing a plastic broken knife to a gunfight with the military that has laser weapons. You will not be fighting back. You will just die. And they're making fun of you. What are those two things should tick you off? Here they're stealing all the money. There's the market. Your money going everywhere. I don't know if that's gold or penny. You may find yourself. Did you see the consequence? When the, when the penny or the gold or whatever it was hit the window and broke it, and now he's going to say, you may find yourself living in a, in a what? A garden shed? In the original, it's a shotgun shack. Well, guess what? You're, all your guns are going to be gone at some point. They're just weakening you now. This is the incremental evil. Why, why are these moving people taking stuff out of this lady's house and she's super ticked off? Because this is what they're orchestrating now. They're just making this three, four years ago to make fun of you. And he's one of them. Good looking, older, nice, cordial. I even had a weird dream about him I'm not going to get into now. But as he's sitting there telling the class at the mall about how they're going to bring worldwide socialism and a guillotine, and he brings out a guillotine standy and all that stuff, he's being completely kind Professor Tom Hanks in my weird dream from a few months ago. And that's before I knew about this. But everything that was said, what got the people mad in my dream was when I agreed with him and told him about Jesus. Then, then they got all pissy. <laughs> Anyhow. Living in your garden shack. And you may find yourself not at home in your home. 
You may find yourself looking for your large automobile. And you may find yourself without a beautiful house, without a beautiful wife. And you may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? How did I get here? Well, we robbed you blind. We just told you in the Behold a Pale Horse. This whole thing has been a scam and a setup. Do you understand that? Do you know how long they've been working on this? We could burn up a whole bunch of more time, which we're not going to, establishing and showing you how long they've been working on this. You're just kind of coming to the tail end of it, which is why Christ is telling you a flood of water of judgment is coming. In this case, it's the communism, everything that we've already talked about, and the debt, and just as it was in the days of Noah with water judgment, now you have this judgment 2.0. And now they're showing you with the money. They've they've made the family disappear by killing the wife. They've made the car and the home disappear. This You're the sacrificial lamb, America. There's the loan chart. Why is the water holding you down? Why did he just say that? Let the water hold you down. Let the debt hold you down. You're being robbed right now. And the happy shark. Water flowing underground. Water flowing underground. Well, that's because the 2,000 plus CEOs have quit their jobs and taken their money. And they're, they're off and gone. And all these dumb celebrities, they're probably underground by now. And they're, they're, much more could be said about that. You're being lied to and deceived on so many levels. The only thing telling you the truth is Jesus. After the money's gone. After the what's gone? After the money's gone? Where's the money going? Yourself. Well, how do I oh, I figured out what the uh, Schwinn bike falling from the top of the building is all about. That had to do with, in the movie, Hologram for the King here. He was an uh, executive for the, the Schwinn bike makers, and they just got rid of all those jobs by sending them over to China. And then he was in peril and didn't have a job, and so then he has to go to Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia, where Edadel is, and Riyadh, and then sell them a type of hologram technology and whatever else happens, I don't care. But um, the, the, the falling bikes must be the consequences of your government screwing you over by getting rid of all of our pro productivity and sending our jobs to other countries. And you can look into Bill Clinton and quite a few other people who were responsible for that. And then all this paper is coming out the windows. What is that? Is that the, the paper dollars reminiscent of the ticker tape that uh, the, the depression of 29, they were throwing the ticker tape out, out the windows. Remember that? He knows what's going on and he loves it. He loves that you're suffering. You're going to suffer. And he loves it. And you may ask yourself. This is everybody losing their jobs and him getting the stamp discharged on his head with everybody else. One of these guys is going to start bawling in a minute. They're making fun of your pain. Where is my large automobile? And you may tell yourself, this was my. Did you see the, uh, the, the wrecking ball back there taking away the houses? This is. This is their representation of a uh, corporate takeover, communism, blah, 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 and stealing everything. You get no private property. And the one thing that he has left is Schwinn bike. They take that away. That's how communism works. But remember, Crystal Ball from the Hill says that communism is a good thing and we need it. This was my beautiful house. And you may tell yourself. She's getting drunk and perishing on the street because she's lost everything while he drives by on his bike. Always the gentleman, Tom Hanks. The devil incarnate. This was my beautiful life. Let, the water Let the water hold you down. And see, these are the bankers that are all together that are loaning you the money in a, in a sophisticated thievery system. Me 
and those fine Chinese communists that your devil government from hell has taken money from, you're the collateral. Your stuff is the collateral. That's just part of the picture to see the, the Amcel Rothschild scheme on top of it and your coming force uh, uh, of going under Noahide because you have no money, no housing. That's coming. No power. You're, of course you're going to agree to it. I, I don't recommend you do because you go to hell in your sins. But yeah, they've, they've got this whole thing set up. You will comply with the will of Satan or they'll just cut your head off. No hide. Said laws. He's making fun of you there as well. Over at Camo Rose's channel, cryptocurrency system using body activity data. Food shutdown. Farmers told to quit. Bye-bye, food. It was nice having you. Ready to get on the ark yet? Lockdown protests. They are happening. Oh, and by the way, Google is lying to you about what's happening. Here's your protests that uh, they've made fun of. Ohio residents peacefully protesting, you know, the thing. Martial law lockdown at the state capitol, for which they don't care. I mean, they already knew this was going to be. They gave you social media so that you could, you know, have some illusion of power uh, to show everybody, I really am mad. I don't like this. Yeah, they don't care. They totally don't care. And I don't know where it is on here somewhere. Oh, yes, this is where the pagans take over the planet and certain colors you're allowed to go in and other colors you're not. You should totally check out my sham scam video and Midsommar video. The relationship between the president and the FEMA. All oh, those poor mannequins giving their lives over for the lie. Police find churchgoers at drive-in services. Why do shopping centers have watchtowers? That is weird. <sighs> the Internet of Living Things. Five, six Gs. You know what that is. I don't buy that at all. And... I am probably going to have to split this into two videos when everything is said and done. She has a video on here of Tom Hanks's son where he's threatening everybody with FEMA camps. Yeah, there it is. Let me get that for you. Hey guys, I'm really stressed out right now. Um, it's been coming to my attention that a lot of Trump supporters have been figuring out the truth about me and my family, you know, being in the, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And I don't know what to do right now because everything's starting to come to light. I mean, these extremely reliable websites like 4chan, 8chan have been exposing shit. And it's like if somebody wrote it on the internet, you know it must be true. And it is true. Jobs are gone. Next is your money. Yep, they're they're going for it, and then they're just gonna kill you off. Do not give people your DNA. You could be set up for any crime. We have your DNA. You must have done it. We have your DNA. Don't give that to people. Anyhow, thank you very much. God bless. <laughs>